pretend like I'm doing something. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Car Studio. Uh, we're getting ready to watch this vet. We finally got a break in the weather. And just a second, let me get the camera set up here. And uh, let's just walk around one more time before we wash it and just see how bad this thing is. So you've got mirrors faded. And uh, of course, we know the top is the worst part. Um, I think the top might actually look, at least it'll look tan again. I don't know uh, how much better it will come up. And like I said, this car's got a lot of cosmetic flaws. You've got the fiberglass chipping here on the door and there's no paint left anymore. Um, I don't think there's any clear coat left on this. Uh, we might be able to bring it back to life, but I doubt it. Um, of course you got your, your uh, you know, mold and I don't know algae whatever you want to call it green stuff all over it uh, it's just really rough shape and uh, so I like washing a vehicle first before I do anything else uh, just to get an idea of what I'm working with and um, we're gonna do that right now I'm gonna fire up the old Subaru here and uh, get to work yes that's right I have a Subaru pressure washer and so far no ringland failure uh, no rod knock it's uh, it's a geographical oddity This is just a pre-wash guys and I cannot believe how well this top is looking. I stopped midway through uh, not only because I ran out of gas but I wanted to show you just the before and after and like I said this is just a, a pre-wash. I'm just pressure washing the car see what it can get off and then uh, I'm gonna hit this with some purple power and a brush and just agitate it and then pressure wash it one more time.
holy smokes guys check this out the top is tan again I never would have dreamed that the top would come out that good Wow and uh, looking at the trunk with water on it it makes me think that there uh, there either is still some clear coat left or at worst I can just lightly scuff it with like some 1500 grit and um, or maybe thousand grit and just re-clear it that way I don't have to worry about uh, blending paint or anything like that if it comes down to that I don't know if we're gonna do any paint work on this car or not but man this top is amazing okay we're not done yet this is just a pre-wash this is what you have to do when you first get a vehicle that's been sitting I'd highly recommend getting a pressure washer they're not expensive you can buy one like uh, I have for like 250 bucks sometimes less when they're on sale and it's just a 2700 psi uh, it's really nothing special and um, it, it just does stuff that a regular water hose wash will not do uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video but um, I'm spraying it in all these nooks and crannies okay these window seals underneath the top around that seal and in the video you may see it there's stuff flying out constantly and a water hose just doesn't have the pressure to do that what I want to do to get the rest of this out is soak it with purple power and then just agitate it with a brush and then hit it with the pressure washer one more time. All right, so I've got some uh, soapy water mixed up and I'm not using um, car wash soap. When you're doing something like this, you want to use uh, Dawn or some kind of uh, degreasing dishwashing uh, liquid. That is what's best for getting all the crud off a vehicle that's been sitting like this and uh, real quick if anybody's interested I'm just going to show you my car cleaning cart I'm not going to go over all the products that I use honestly I don't have any bias towards any particular products except a couple so in this application um, purple power that is a must just get a whole gallon of purple power or more and um, mix it up because this stuff is priceless you have to have it like I said I'm going to be soaking the whole car down especially the top with this stuff and then I'm going to be using a brush to agitate uh, the last little bit of dirt. And um, awesome, this is also really good stuff. I use this on interior parts. Uh, we'll get to that later. Like I said, I don't want to get into products or anything right now. But um, yeah, I got I got brushes here. I've got everything on this cart to clean the car. I got my buffing uh, compounds and polishing compounds over there. And um, in here, I've got my sandpaper and microfibers. That's keeping this drawer from working and then down there I've got my buffers but uh, let's get to it let's start wash, washing this car and uh, then get it back in the garage all right the whole car is soaked in purple power I like doing that first uh, that just breaks up the dirt a little bit more because you can't really see it but there's still a lot of black in here and look my fingers literally wiping it off now purple power is an amazing product so they're not a uh, paid sponsor probably. I just really like their stuff. So I'm getting it soapy here. We're gonna start with the top. And uh, the soap will just kind of help break this stuff up some more and also get it wet enough that it doesn't just go back into the fabric. So we're gonna do that. Then get back on it with a brush. Oh yeah, look at that, getting lighter. Now, uh, while I've got the dirt still uh, broken up, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the pressure washer back up and get this top finished because if you let this sit on the fabric too long after you agitate it, then, you know, it'll go back in. And
got this whole car soaked up, washed. I'm not worried about the wheels right now. Uh, rinse it off, we'll pull it in the garage. It's a new day and we are back to working on the vet. Now, check out that top. It is completely dry and man, it looks like new. I was so uh, just amazed at how well this turned out. And it didn't like tear apart like I expected. It didn't even leak inside the car even. I mean, I'm, I'm astonished, I can't believe it. Um, so the top is dry. Uh, there's literally like no stains whatsoever. Can't believe this. So now we're gonna start the buffing and polishing phase of this uh, unit. And I've gotta start with these headlights. Uh, absolutely, number one pet peeve of mine on a vehicle is cloudy uh, headlights. Anytime I'm flipping a car or you know just fixing a car up for myself, uh, if they have headlights like this, this is the first thing that I do on one. I won't even drive it. It makes the car look so dated and so neglected. And it's such an easy process, which I'm gonna go over step by step with you here in just a few. Um, first, I wanna explain what causes this and why you can't just use the um, you know, the toothpaste method or the bug spray, like all that stuff is just temporary. So what this is, is this lens is plastic like most cars nowadays. And especially if you do a lot of night driving, you get, you know, bugs and dirt and stuff. So these headlight bulbs get very, very hot and it heats up this plastic. And over time, all of that road grime uh, gets on here and it gets baked into this plastic. And on top of that, you've got the UV rays from the sun, which are also um, breaking down this plastic, just like they did, you know, the back of the car, uh, the clear coat here. Look at this difference. And this too gets polished in about the same way. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna sand it down and then we're going to buff and then we're going to polish and they will look brand new again. All right guys, we're over here at my cleaning cart that I showed you earlier. And the reason why I like this thing is, you know, it's here in the corner with all my cleaning supplies when I need it. But when we're doing something like this, we just roll it over here to the uh, Corvette. We don't need that shovel. We'll see, there it goes. All right guys, follow me over here. Next, we need some tape. Two inch tape. This stuff right here is not cheap, and I chew my students out all the time for using it in the wrong places. But I'm gonna show you how to use it in the right places. All right, let's talk about sandpaper. So, there's a few different ways you can uh, go about this. You can just hand sand it if you don't have, you know, the sander. So right here, I got these from, I think, O'Reilly's. Uh, you can get it at any auto parts store, but this is 1,000 grit and 1,500 grit, and you can just hand sand them right out. That's more, so the best bet is just six inch DA sandpaper. And so this sander, this is what's known as a uh, dual action sander. And you can pick up one of these from Harbor Freight for I think like 30 bucks. So first step you need to do, now that we've got all of our compounds and paper and tools out, first step you need to do is tape off the surrounding area because you don't want to sand through your clear coat or buff through your clear coat or get uh, this compound down in places that's hard to get out. So let's do that right now. So now that we kind of got it taped off, uh, it's time to sand. Again, I'm just using 1000 grit on a DA. All right guys, check it out. It looks like we got it uh, sanded down with the 1000 grit alone, which I'm very surprised. I thought we would have to go down to 800 at least. All right, so for buffing, we are using Meguiar's M110. This is all that I have left. I don't have the bottle, but I will link it in the description. So when you're buffing, you never wanna put your uh, compound right on the pad. You wanna put it on the, the substrate 
And that's what we're doing here. Just kind of smear it around a little bit. Then take your pad, work it around some more. You don't want this stuff flinging off, it goes everywhere. And then just uh, slowly work it into the plastic. Now I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be super satisfying. This is a 3M Perfected machine polish, and it does an all right job. And you want to use this with a foam polishing pad. So let's get to it. And uh, polishing is way more forgiving than buffing. You don't have to worry about uh, burning through or melting plastic as much. But same process. You want to uh, just put this on your substrate. And then kind of smear it around and then start slow. Look how much better that looks. Holy smokes. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a Corvette or a Toyota Camry. If the headlights look like these did when we started, uh, it's going to turn a lot of people away. And also fail inspection in a lot of uh, states. This episode, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And in the next episode, we are going to work on that interior. Uh, we're going to diagnose the top, figure out why it's not going down on its own and pull those seats out and clean uh, the seat rails and um, put some uh, lubricant on them, get them sliding again. The driver's side doesn't even work, so we gotta diagnose that. Remember that I told you we're gonna cover electrical issues on this car also. And we're gonna shampoo the carpets and get our floor, mat floor mats put back in. But check this thing out. Look at that top is tan again. The lights are clear. It's looking so good. I can't wait to see the finished product. So, if you like what you see, please uh, subscribe, like this video, turn on notifications, and I'm uploading like every